Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Foolish Capitalist, where we discover interesting startups, interview founders, and help you become less foolish with angel investing. My name is Razi. And my name is Osman, and welcome to The Clueless Capitalist. So in this episode, we have uh, Samir. Samir is the co-founder and CEO of Interactive Cast. Interactive Cast is a one-stop virtual ad tech platform for creating employment in Bangladesh. So since launching, Interactive Cast has had more than 90,000 people take courses via its online platform. And just yesterday, Samir and his team won an award at the Bangla Bundu uh, Innovation Grand Competition that was held in Bangladesh. So congratulations, Samir and welcome to the episode. Thank you so much, Rezi, and uh, thanks, Osman, and both of you for welcoming me. Uh, I was a fan of this show because I have seen some of the like leading founders from Bangladesh. They have given interview in this show. So from then, I actually wanted to be part of this show. It's nice to you. Actually, when we, when we met uh, last week, when you were in Singapore, I was like, this is, I really like the story. I really like what you're working on. I was like, we really need, uh, both Osman and I were like, we really need uh, Samir on an episode. So it's good to finally have you here. So let's start with, uh, with your pitch deck. And then afterwards, we'll go into the question. 3.7 million people, including 66% graduates, remain unemployed every year in Bangladesh. For 1% unemployment decrease, GDP increases by 2%. So it's a burning issue and creating adverse effect in our economy. For solving this, we are here with Interactive Cares. In Interactive Cares, we have a highly balanced and passionate team who are having more than 30 years of relevant combined experience and highly passionate about solving the unemployment problem in Bangladesh. Interactive Cares is a one-stop virtual edtech platform for creating employability to 3.7 million unemployed youth and make them skills with integrated digital learning. How we are doing that? In Interactive Cares, right now we are having more than 105 courses and more than 90,000 students are doing those courses. Our career path program, they are especially six months long. In first four months, students are being prepared through a holistic and integrated learning approach. They are watching videos, attending live classes, attending daily support sessions, doing capstone projects and assignments. And at the fifth month, we are making them prepared through a holistic job preparation module. At the last month, we are basically forwarding their CVs and creating placements for our students in our 100 hiring partner companies. These companies below to top software companies, startups, corporates, digital marketing agencies from Bangladesh. From this year, we are also placing local Bangladeshi talents in the global market. As you know, Bangladesh ranks second in terms of freelancing and digital labor in the whole world. In last one year, Interactive Cares have generated more than $700,000 US dollar revenue, maintaining 900% yearly growth. And 90,000 plus students, more than 6,000 students, got jobs and internships from Interactive Cares. We are also having partnership with 100 companies and 30 universities from Bangladesh who are actually making our process more smoother. Our target market is mostly from university students, freelancers, and young professionals. We have tapped into a market of 10 billion US dollar. As you know, Bangladesh is having a really large population of 180 million people. Interactive Cares is having a really good position among its competitors. Usually students, they pay through our website and app, and here the costing is from $20 to $100. And we actually maintain a 75% healthy gross profit margin in terms of our revenue. So Interactive Cares, among its competitor, Interactive Cares is having a really good position because uh, Interactive Cares is providing job placement support, learners job connectivity, daily, daily live classes, uh, live support sessions, 10x better content and 10x better support to our students. So that's why our customer retention rate increased to 70% last month. In education, teachers play a really vital role. And surprisingly, in interactive cares, our teachers, they belong to top 1% in that specific industry. So that's why students are coming to us. Our learning model is also integrated. Here students, they are getting all the things at a time, like they're getting videos, they're attending live classes, they're attending support sessions twice in a day, they're doing assignments, and after that, they're also getting job placement support. So that's how we are basically different from our competitors. We have a vision to create 1 million job placements within next few years we also want to be a 100 million us dollar annual revenue company within next five years we have a vision is like that one student they will be doing courses from interactive cares and after finishing the courses they'll be getting certificates for
from our partner university and after that they will be getting jobs in our partner company as well so that's how we'll be working as a bridge between academia and industry and solving the gap between academia and industry which is one of the core reasons for having massive unemployment in countries like bangladesh we already raised more than 350000 us dollar from uk based supercharger ventures us based blue aura ventures flagship ventures and some renowned angels from bangladesh and singapore for this round we are raising 1 million us dollar it will help us to reach 3 million us dollar annual revenue to place more 20000 people in jobs to launch more 200 courses we are on a mission to solve unemployment problem your support can solve this problem very rapidly let's solve unemployment problem together i mean that's a great pitch sanir I just wanted to quickly understand a little bit about the the real problem on the ground but before we do that why don't you just walk us through why you've created interactive cares why now why is this the right time for you for your business did, did you give us some background sure so before starting interactive cares i was in bangladesh army so i was there for two and a half years but i uh, had to go through a, a severe injury so that's why i had to leave uh, army but from the beginning i really had passion about education and unemployment problem in bangladesh so after coming back from army i used to involve in teaching in uh, various leading learning institutes in bangladesh i also even started an offline education business in bangladesh so from there i got to see the pain point of the students i got to see the like frustration and students like students they are graduating but they are not getting jobs so for at least one and a half year they are searching for jobs they are attending entrance exams in the government uh, jobs of bangladesh but uh, everyone is frustrated so uh, after seeing this at that time we started interactive cares back in 2020 but in 2020 it tech space in bangladesh was very uh, like they uh, they were going through the initial phase in fact we didn't have a really leading edtech at that moment students they were just watching videos through youtube and facebook that was kind of edtech in bangladesh so at that moment i was having another education business so it was a profitable one and i i got really uh, like market insights from there so uh, at that moment, I also met Kushbu, uh, who is the co-founder of Interactive Cares. She was running an UN-based NGO and uh, she was leading an operations role there. So she also had this kind of experience in her previous life. And also uh, she used to teach in a leading in a learning institute called Saifus, which is the most prominent English learning institute in Bangladesh. So I uh, basically invited her to join with me for starting Interactive Cares. And that's how we actually got started. I mean, that's really interesting. So um, in terms of, you know, the reason why when I was talking to you the first time, why I was pretty interested was because of the sustainable development goals of that you're addressing. One of them is creating employment and creating, you know, meaningful employment. And I just wanted to do a commentary rather than a question, because a lot of people who are not from Bangladesh, who are based in the UK or Europe or the US will say, you know, this isn't helping Americans, this isn't helping the UK, it's not helping anybody, but so what? And and I think this is one of the key things which is often overlooked. And, uh, and I kind of get on a bit of a soapbox here because the reason why we have huge amounts of migration and a brain drain from certain countries, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh being some of them, is because we don't have meaningful employment for the incredible talent in their home countries. And here we have the rise of the gig culture, the, the you know, the, the gig operator. And, and what you're doing is saying, hey, we can educate you and we can get you into meaningful employment. And that improves everybody's value. It improves the, the operator because that person can now get educated and find meaningful employment without having to undergo the real stress of moving their, themselves, their family to a different country to to get meaningful employment. You're now leveraging on that. So I think this is a great time to be doing something like this because everybody's now more comfortable with working remotely and being able to hire people remotely. And for me, this is one of those key businesses which I see that are enabling enabling the 
the value within the local talent that you have because I look at it and I, I look at places like India, Pakistan and Bangladesh and the real problem is, is the, the brain drain that goes and you don't have the retained talent. Really smart, really, really academically clever people, really industrious people and they've left the country and here you're really addressing that problem. So I love the, the meaning and purpose behind the business. So yeah, I'm going to get off my soapbox now and hand it over to Rasi to ask a few proper questions. And I think that was really insightful uh, commentary. I mean, if you look at uh, South Asia, the un youth unemployment is really high and what uh, Samir is doing with directive care is, is a very necessary endeavor. So the question, so I'm going to speak from my experience, Samir. I've signed up for online courses. So I signed up for Coursera to do a course once. They were charging me something like $250 a month. Forget about finishing the course, right? I think I never got beyond the first class. So I think that was, that's one of the big challenges that um, a lot of these online ed tech platforms face, especially those who have like, you know, self-serve or learn at your own pace kind of classes. How, what is your experience with something like this? And uh, how has Interactive Cares overcome this problem? Yeah, so that's a really interesting question. So talking about my experience, I also enrolled in some of the courses of Udemy during my university life, but I never finished those courses. Even like uh, I also didn't watch uh, like videos after module one or module two. So I got the pain point and also the problem when we started this journey and we used to do some market research like there are kinds of two kinds of tech companies in uh, like in Bangladesh and also in the other uh, popular markets like one is providing uh, like uh, self-paced based learning like watching videos and all and another kind is like they are doing only live classes. But uh, in these two models, there are some problems like in self-paced based learning, you cannot talk with the teachers for some time you lose interest. But in life plus based learning, there are also some other issues like there can be schedule mismatch, there can be electricity issues in countries like Bangladesh and also uh, when we watch videos. Uh, we are getting actually really polished content, but in live classes, everything is wrong. When we did market research, we actually solved these kind of problems in our model. Our learning model is integrated, where we have uh, like filled the necessity of having videos, we have filled the necessity of having live classes. So we in integrated both video lectures, we integrated live classes as well. And after that, we have filled the necessity of support. Like one student, they're uh, attending coding sessions or they are doing some assignments or doing some projects of their own. They are getting stuck. So at that moment, no one is there to solve, solve them and help them. So for solving this, we have also integrated support sessions twice in a day, in the afternoon and, and in the night. So students, they can come to our Zoom session and they can solve their problem one-on-one -on -one and doing like skin sharing, code reviews, this, this kind of stuff. And after that, we have seen like the unemployment problem in Bangladesh. Uh, so yeah, Bangladesh and also in some other emerging markets, which is a crazy one. So uh, in uh, for our target market, we have seen that students want to do like online courses because they want to earn or they want to get into jobs mostly. For solving this, we have integrated job placement facility as well. We have partnered with leading like uh, tech companies, startups, corporates in Bangladesh. And we are also in talks with some of the Singapore and US based companies as well to place uh, like uh, local Bangladeshi talents in, in those global markets. So that's how we actually uh, increase the learning experience. And uh, like students in our platform, they are communicated at least few times in a week week they can attend live classes they can attend support sessions every day like they are getting emails like there is a core attraction of getting jobs like if, if any student they want to be a, a talent pro batch they want to have like they need to have 60 to 70 percent marks in their assignment so that's why they are bound to attend classes that's how we are actually increasing the course completion rate in our platform it's near about 60 percent where if we talk about the like overall market standard it's near about 15 percent so that's how actually we increase the course completion rate and learning engagement rate in a better way so uh, one quick question how many different kinds of courses are there right now in interactive cats So we have four kinds of courses, but our first priority is technology learning. Uh, here, courses like full stack web development, Python, Django, modern stack web development, app development, these kind of courses are there. And for second category, freelancing category, 
here we can see skills like SEO, UI UX, video editing, this kind of thing. Okay, so then when it comes to live support, right? How do we like how many live support sessions do you have ongoing? Because then, like, I wonder if the person who's there on live support hours will they know this variety of topics that they can provide live support on, or do you have like live live support happening uh, for each one of these different uh, topics? Because one of the challenges. Yes that some of these ad tech platforms face who have live support is the person who comes to do the live support they don't have knowledge or they don't have subject matter expertise and that's where you start seeing a lot of bad online reviews saying hey I came for this coding class their expert didn't know they didn't know the topic well enough you know so how do you overcome that well so if I talk about our mechanism let's say for example a program called full stack web development so usually these programs are six months long. We have three leading instructors and two support instructors in the back end. So these support instructors, they are basically checking assignments, grading them, and also they are super connected with the students. So students mostly come to them at first for solving their problem. So students, uh, they all the students know about the support instructors and at the same time, support instructors have also data of all the students, like their backgrounds, like how they are doing, like let's say for finishing two months, they have those data, like these students, uh, how much they got in their first assignment, second assignments or their uh, coding test. Our, in our case, we have specific support instructors for specific programs and we have specific hours for specific like programs like let's say and we have like let's say separate zoom session for one separate zoom session for full stack web development where all the students of full stack web, web development can come only and also two support instructors will be there who are specially assigned to full stack web development yeah no i was just gonna say that this is one of the, the biggest issues that you, that you typically get with online courses is just a complete disengagement from the course instructors and the people that are facilitating that and, uh, and one thing I took away from the comment you just made course completion rates of 60% did, did I hear it right normally it's 15 1 5% is that yes, right? No. Yes, right normally it's 15% in, in our in global platforms like Udemy, Coursera and some of the leading platforms is average 15% Amazing, life. yeah. That so that's amazing because you're taking a student and you're pretty much ensuring that they complete the course correctly. Now, if I understand it correctly, then you help them get placed into employment. Can you walk me through how that happens and uh, what your success rate is around that? So uh, like let's say for six months program, students they like for past four months, they are learning through a different holistic way like uh, videos, live classes, attending support sessions, doing assignments and this kind of thing. So after four months and the fifth month, uh, we basically filter some of the students. Like uh, in, in each batch, probably there might be 300 students, but some of them uh, like we are getting to 70 percent marks so they will get into in the like our special job batches so in those batches students they are they'll be getting the like special job modules like how they will be preparing their cvs how they will search companies to linkedin and other job job portals and also how they will get recommendations how they will prepare their portfolios so we will we are actually teaching this kind of stuff to different industry experts we are inviting people from leading tech companies leading agencies or leading corporates they are basically helping them to prepare this kind of thing and last month after like doing this kind of stuff we are basically inviting companies to a virtual career fair where like 50 to 100 companies on an average attend and they take interviews separately for taking people from this kind of like learning path or career path. So like in, you know, latest career path companies like Food Panda, uh, companies like ShopUp, companies like Pachau, these kind of leading companies attended and they took interviews, some of them got hired. So that's how, and also from our case, we also recommend some people uh, like who were regular from the beginning in those program, uh, uh, got uh, good marks in their assignments, got good marks in coding test or got good marks in kind of other exams. So that's how uh, like uh, they're getting hired and before like, like, um, 
giving the appointment companies take recommendation from us like how this candidate is and what their previous track record okay so that if i understand this correctly then you're encouraging students to really perform well because if they don't perform well then yes. they're unlikely to be promoted as a candidate for employment so that's that's an encouragement there uh, how long have you been doing this a uh, business placement component is it new is it something that you've been doing for a few years no so basically we started as a tech company but uh, we uh, added this employment vertical uh, six i mean eight months back so from okay. there we actually got started to this thing like placement all right so this is pretty relatively new so the numbers may not be may not be representative at the moment but can you share roughly what the type of placement rates is conversion from student to employee candidate to placement Do you have yeah, those so, numbers to hand? So, like, let's say, as I talked earlier, 60% of our students they finish the courses. So, out yeah. of those 60% students, near about 8% students right now they are getting placed to companies because, as I said earlier, we have uh, like added this vertical few months back. So that's how. If I talk about 90,000 students, not all of the students got these employment facilities. So from last eight months. our new students they got this kind of employment facility so that's how the like job placement rate is pretty lower 8% but interestingly in last month it was less than 6% so it increased to 8% and we are hoping that it will touch 20% by end of this year that's good and that's not a that, that's not a mark on you it's just the fact that yeah understanding that is relatively new and it's yeah, something yeah. that you're going to be iterating and developing and and improving upon going from going from below 6% to get to 8% and having a target of 20% placement rate i think is actually quite commendable especially in the short period that you've been doing that in when i was looking at companies like airwork for example in the past they they focus purely on placing talent um i do you have any partnerships with any of the of the startups in this space or are you still doing this independently No, uh, basically we have partnership with Airwork. Like uh, here, the partnership looks like any student from Interactive Cares they get placed to Airwork. We'll get a certain commission from there, and when they see that like some of their talents they lack. some of the skills so they will refer to us for getting courses like let's say one talent they lack in python so they will uh, refer to interactive cares for doing the python courses we will be also giving some discounts to the like uh, talents of air work as well so we do have this kind of partnership with them and just as a commentary for everybody else uh, watching and and listening one thing that we've noted and the reason why i personally have been quite bullish on the bangladesh startup ecosystem is that this type of thing happens way too often you know where one startup comes along and they leverage and they partner and help each other out so there seems to be a very supportive engagement within the ecosystem to help each other out and to see where there are gaps and how they can be plugged in by by new new businesses coming into the space and and uh everyone benefits it's like the the rising tide lifts all ships and this is a good example of that we were talking to Asikul Bai from Prio yeah. Shop not that long ago he was here in Singapore and he he was also commenting about how you know they they work with other startups and uh, and I met quite a few during the uh, Echelon event here in Singapore both me and Razi met a lot of Bangladeshi founders It's amazing how everybody seems to know everybody. It's a very yeah. tight knit and uh, and collaborative ecosystem. Yeah, yeah, okay. and we also believe in collaboration as well. That's why we are open to do partnership with like uh, all of the startups in Bangladesh. Okay. I feel that what what you're doing with the job placements, right? It is like what Osman was saying. It is commendable, and it's also an element that is necessary. But also a difficult one. That's why we see a lot of the attack platforms. I feel it's something they stay away from. It's like they provide the education, they give you the certificate, and then you, as the student or as the course participant, you are on your own to go make something out of this education and make something out of this certificate. And what I've seen from my experience in Singapore, because I have taught at some of these platforms, is the challenge then is the student has it. They have the set, they have the knowledge, but they don't have the support. They don't know where to go to. 
and what you are building with this whole ecosystem with the virtual career fair with the potential employers who know the quality of the students they're going to come out of interactive cares they can potentially hire them i think this is something necessary but also a very difficult part of the business to build and if you can figure this out and you can do this well it will give you a huge competitive edge over all the other players that are out there if you don't mind me asking in terms of some of the you know the metrics that matter what are they and for most investors they'll be looking at things like you know your customer acquisition cost your lifetime value can you share some of those metrics with us yeah yeah sure so our customer acquisition cost is near about two dollars right now and uh, like uh, interesting fact was that it was three and a half dollars few months back but day by day the customer acquisition cost dropped down a bit and uh, our lifetime value is near about 18 to 20 dollars so yeah and because uh, we have seen that in our platform on an average each student they at least buy two of the programs so that's how our lifetime value is increasing and just on that lifetime value once you've placed a student and they've got a job is that the end of their engagement with interactive cares or do, do you have other services that that would bring them back no it will not be the end of engagement with interactive cares because when they like let's say they are getting into a job with a company but after finishing the job that company they can still come back to interactive cares because every week we are promoting the hiring of our partner companies so there is new job opening in every week and so uh, like uh, and you know this kind of candidates they have attraction to those platforms who are promoting jobs or who are basically hiring partners so that reason for that reason these candidates will come to us definitely and also uh, for our like hiring partners we have a special segment that uh, we will do on demand training uh, to improve the skill set of of the employees of those company like let's say one company like let's say suppose they are work probably uh, they want to improve the quality of python in in, uh, in their uh, employees so we will do on demand training for them hiring like but hiring instructors from our code team and also from the instructors we are having and they will help improving the python skills uh, for the employees of we are work so definitely the journey will not end and they will come back because if 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 they come back uh, to us definitely there is opportunity to get a job in a better position with a better salary on average how many courses does each student take like for example once i'm done a full stack development do they take something else like they can take uh, relevant courses like some of our full stack web development students they take courses like data structure and algorithm or courses like app development so yeah in uh, category wise they take uh, more one or two and currently uh, you mentioned that uh, you are targeting 16 to 30 year olds right how and it's great that your customer acquisition cost has gone down from 350 to $2 how do you currently attract the students are you doing yeah, like so, school group shows at the universities are you setting up booths at the university if you have someone out there distributing flyers do you do, do you run ads online like how do you get most of your students right now so we have uh, some set of different strategies like for the paid channels we do facebook ads we do sms marketing we do email marketing and also we have a telesales team who actually regularly all uh, call to our like students from database and also from talent pool but apart from those paid channels if i talk about the free customer acquisition strategy like before launching any courses or career path we launch a free master class so you know, so that students can attend in those master classes and get a overview of idea how they will be teaching and what are the benefits they will be getting one of the really like uh, strategical move for us because on an average 500 to 700 students sign up in this kind of free master classes among them 20 to 25% students they just get converted to our paid student every time so this is one of the strategy apart from that we have more than 1000 campus ambassadors from 50 learning institute of bangladesh uh, from universities from colleges and also from schools and they actually do affiliate marketing for us when they like let's say promote one of our courses and if if any any student or any candidate they take courses from those link they get 18% commission so that's how uh, they are basically earning through our platform and we and we are also earning from them 
that is one of the strategy another strategy if i talk about our social media channel channels in facebook we have more than 330000 user base and also in linkedin and if we sum up all the numbers it would be 0.5 million or 500 thousand this is one of the core reasons how we are actually getting students because lots of users are already connected with us like uh, if i talk about the university going students if i talk about the young professionals freelancers they at least heard our name once or twice in their life that's how we actually uh, like uh, reach to people we reach to more than 10 million people in last six months this is the statistics of our social media channels and it's uh, quite, this is really impressive and later on i'm going to be asking a few follow-up questions but i think that's more relevant once once we get an idea of um, the money that you're raising and how you plan to use it i think those questions will be a bit more relevant there in terms of the competitive landscape earlier you had a slide where you showed you mentioned a few players in the market but what we saw was that interactive cares is in its own category in a way because you have the job placement element that the others don't have is there any player who's who is very close to what you are doing in Bangladesh? Yeah, in Bangladesh, the tech market is very competitive and growing right at this moment. Uh, among the startup ecosystem of Bangladesh, the tech market is one of the leading one because we have a really good player like 10 Minutes School, Shiko. They have raised good funding from uh, leading investors like Wavemaker, Sequa, Sequa Capital. But the thing is, divide the tech market into different verticals. There would be like K to 12 sector where companies like 10 Minutes School, Shiko, they are mostly focused on. They are mostly focused on like uh, academic learning and also uh, entrance examinations. And uh, in the skill, uh, there there is also another vertical, strong vertical, which is skills and workforce. In that vertical, we are the leading one. And in that space, like uh, job placement is a really attractive one. But there is companies like Programming Hero, but they are not operating as startup. They are basically a traditional, they are operating as a traditional model, but they're solely focused on programming and they are having two or three programs every year, not vertical, pro like various programs like us. But basically, when we understand all of these different things, um, I mean, I'm, I'm quite impressed with what you're doing and where you're going. What is actually holding you back? Um, if, uh, if I was to ask you to nail it down into simple statement, what is it that's holding you and Interactive Cares back from achieving success? Yeah, so right now we already have a like grab in the market for the last three years. We are operating to our target customers. They are knowing us. But if we want to grow further or if we want to be the leader in this edtech space or in hiring space in Bangladesh, so in that case, we want to grow faster. So for growing, we need to have more funding right now because uh, like let's say like if we want to like let's say the target we are trying to achieve like uh, placing 1 million people within the next few years is a tough thing to achieve for achieving this we want to like we uh, have to do more partnership with the companies we have to launch more programs and we have to do lots a lot more things so for that reason funding is one of the core challenges right now so apart from funding, the other challenges I think we have already overcome because uh, we already passed that pre-seed stage and also we have a, a like minimum grab in the market. Right? So it really comes down to, to needing money to, to take you to the next stage. I think Razi has a few questions regarding the, the fundraising. Over to you. Actually, before we go to the fundraising, this is a question that uh, nobody else gets asked. You know, we've generated AI with all of these developments in AI. I've been speaking to a few professors, a few educators, and they ask me, they'll be like, hey, um, how do I think the education industry is going to shift? How do they uh, educate? And more importantly, how do they assess their students? And they're struggling with that. So I'm wondering um, for your business, for interactive cares, how do you see AI um, impacting your business, I guess? So uh, still we don't have that much effect for AI, but uh, interesting fact is that we are actually teaching AI to our students so that they can leverage AI in their life. So for uh, learning those skills, students, they are basically coming to us. And for the hiring part, definitely we see uh, some candidates, they're using ChatGPT to like uh, do the stuff or do the task uh, the companies they are sending to. But right now the companies are being also clever. Uh, we are also like, 
like setting strategies for the companies that like there are also some other tools where companies can check if the like assessment thing is done from ai or not so uh, like yeah definitely ai is uh, impacting life ai is uh, helping the students to like do smarter things but at the end of the day you need to be club clever you need to be smarter you need to have that skill to be in a better way in life so that's why you need to learn skills and that's why you need to come to platforms like interactive peers if you hear that uh, you are all embracing it as well embracing this ai as it comes so the question around fundraising so early osman asked what's holding you back and he said not having enough funding how much are, you mentioned you're raising a million dollars How much yeah. have you made so far? We have raised more than three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in our pre-seed, but for this round, we are raising one million dollars. And how much have you raised so far out of the one million dollars? So out of the one million dollar, we got commitment of five hundred thousand dollars so far for this round. And what is the valuation? What's the current valuation that you're raising this money at? So we are currently raising at five million dollar pre money valuation. And what is the uh, minimum ticket to for any to uh, join this round? Yeah, so minimum ticket size would be uh, fifteen thousand US dollars to uh, get into this round, and we are raising this round via safe note through like a holding company in Singapore. And this is a good segue because I was actually talking to a. a Uh, a lot of people at the Echelon event earlier on this week and a few of them were making comments about how they're worried about investing in countries like Bangladesh and Pakistan and the like and they say they're difficult markets to enter into and i had to do some educating to explain that most of the companies that were invested in are either incorporated in Singapore or in the US the Delaware C Corp and that's how we go about mitigating that risk so just for everybody who's listening and watching um that's one of the questions that you need to need to ask where is the corporate entity that you're investing in incorporated and typically you will find that most of these companies are doing that by setting up a holding company in Singapore and your care agreements or safe agreements that you're that you're investing via are usually governed under the laws of Singapore or the US um so that's how you go about mitigating the the risk obviously you can't mitigate political and economic risks of a particular country but at least you can mitigate your legal framework and legal risks by by working through a company that's uh, held and incorporated in a jurisdiction that's favorable so uh, just as a, a convenient segue really what type of investors are you looking for because let me just have a look because you were in singapore not that long ago you met for example famous mr mustafa rashid um the unofficial clueless capitalist of this particular gang so we we know mustafa really well um you also met perspective ventures as well um so just walk us through with the type of investors that you're looking for are they just angel investors or are you looking for some someone with a particular skill set yeah so uh, like for the angel investors we are not looking for any particular skill set but it will be better uh, like if uh, those angel investors help us to get more introduction with the uh, new investors we'll be looking for or like let's say finish the round or let's say like when we raise series a uh, if they can give uh, like a uh, if they can give uh, like new introduction to investors that would be enough but uh, like we are not looking for any specific skill set but uh, like we are looking for investors who are sector agnostic but if if they are specialized in edtech that would be more preferable definitely yeah i mean and uh, and that's kind of well for me anyway it's good to know because sometimes people are saying we we don't want we want somebody who can really add value and and often i'm thinking if you have too many people trying to add value you end up really just take not really doing anything because you have too many cooks in the kitchen but my personal view kind of goes against the grain with other angel investors sometimes is that I don't know your business I don't know yeah. it that well and therefore it's not for me to tell you how to run your business the reason yeah. why I'm investing as an angel investor is because I trust you and I trust your co-founder to be able to execute on the vision that you have and that you know your business better than anybody else and that's the reason why I would be involved and invested in 
but it's not my job to tell you how to run your business and i think most angel investors are of that opinion as well but what they want is want to know is that you're trustworthy that you're capable and that you're going to deliver on that vision um and ju- just for everybody um you recently won this award this is you and your co-founder your wife and uh, and that was at the big event where you won an award so again congratulations Thank and you so much. uh yeah, I think we're both uh, we're both really excited about what you're doing. And uh, if we were to if we were to invest as angel investors now, if I put in fifteen thousand, the naive question I call it a naive question, but every investor's thinking this. If I put in fifteen thousand US dollars today, what could my potential exit look like in, and what type of time frame am I looking at? Yeah, so uh, I would say our potential exit would be from 20x to more than that. But uh, the here I'm seeing the ways to exit like that. Uh, when we raise Series A, um, uh, larger VCs will come in and they will like uh, take the exit. I mean, they will help angel investors to have some at least partial exit because we have plans to raise $10 million in our Series A. So uh, for if we can do that, definitely there will be some exit within the next two years. Uh, apart from that, as a founder, in the long run, if the business goes well, uh, we can also buy some shares from the existing angel investors as well. But apart from that, like what we are seeing a really potential one that will be acquired by a very large player sooner or later, like uh, in Bangladesh, the tech space is quite exciting right now. And some uh, large Indian tech players and players from USA, they're trying to enter into the Bangladeshi market. So definitely uh, it would be a really better strategy for them to acquire a leading existing player because they will get uh, some existing user base and uh, they will get some grab in the market as well. So, and also lastly, I will see the option of IPO. Bangladesh startups are headed to get IPOs as well, but that is the like plan B for us. We are seeing like uh, series A by like larger VCs will uh, take share of the angel investors. As a founder, we can buy back shares as well and also potential acquisition by a large player. So um, again, for, for the people watching and listening, you know, when we talk about an exit means being able to realize the investment that you've made. And, and what Samir has just talked through is if you were to put in $15,000 today, we're all hoping that the business grows and, and becomes successful and gets to a stage where it's worth multiples of where it is now, you know, in terms of the, the number of students that you have on, on board, number of placements that you make and, and it becomes super profitable. And to realize that $15,000 of shares, you would then hopefully sell that off. And usually what happens in this space is that if a big VC comes along and says, yep, yeah, I'm really interested in investing, but there's an Osman Ahmed and a Razi Shah that are sitting here and they've got shares. Who are they? Nobody's. I'll just buy them out. Can I buy them out? And then, and then they'll approach existing investors and say, look, you bought it at 15,000. The valuation is, let's say, let's say 100 million now. We want to buy you out at the current valuation or at a discount to it. But it means that we'll get the, the new investor will get a good deal because they're buying shares and cleaning up the cap table. There's fewer investors on the cap table. They're buying the shares at a slight discount. And uh, and it also means that there's more value left for the for the founder as well because they don't need to dilute their shareholding any further just by relinquishing the shares and giving it back. When we were talking about a 20x return, that means potentially taking your fifteen thousand dollars and having a successful exit of around three hundred thousand dollars, which is quite lucrative if you're looking at that type of time frame. In fact, it's a really good return. Um, you wouldn't turn your nose up at it if you were a typical investor. Now, as is the case, and we said this right in the very first episode of Clueless Capitalists, it is high risk, high reward. You know, not every startup is successful, but you can see the reason why we're interested here is that there's traction. There's traction, they've proven that the business model is there, the business model works, they've got customers on board, they've got customers that are paying, and therefore the risk profile is a lot lower than where it would be if Samir had just come to us and said, hey, I've got an idea. I don't know how to do it yet, but I've got an idea and it's a good idea. 
Samir's not saying that. He's saying, I've got a great idea. I've proven it because there are people who have come in as students. They've gone through the process and I've even placed them and put them into jobs. That's, a, that's what we call product market fit. You've got the product, you've got the market, and because people are paying for it, you've got the fit. And therefore, your risk profile in it as an investor is substantially lower. It's just a matter of now growth. And you know, so that gives me one more question. In terms of your growth strategy and your growth plans, what do you have for the next year in terms of growing growing the business? What are your tactics and, and uh, approaches to, to achieving your goals? So, uh, like for next one year, uh, like uh, right now, we are ha- we are going at a rate of 1.2 million dollar annual uh, like revenue rate. But uh, for next, uh, like after one year, we want to be at 3 million US dollar annual revenue. So for that, uh, for achieving that, right now we are having 105 courses. We want to launch more 200 courses. Right now we are having mostly uh, beginner like courses, but for those beginner like courses, we want to launch intermediary and advanced like courses as well. And uh, like we want to explore uh, like more technology area, like we want to launch courses on air, VR, AI, this kind of thing, more technical learning because where we see the opportunity of job placement rate more in this kind of area and uh, like for hiring partners right now we have around 100 hiring partners but for next one year we want to be uh, having at least 300 hiring partners from Bangladesh and also from abroad we have a separate job placement team who are actually continuously working looking for getting more partners and uh, like from this month basically we are actually looking for partners in singapore looking for partners in usa looking for partners in canada and they will basically have uh, help us to get more company partners who are hiring remotely and uh, for hiring remotely uh, bangladeshi local talents are attractive because uh, like companies can hire uh, at a very cheap rate compared to their local talents and bangladeshi freelancers they, they actually earn that reputation that they can work well as a remote worker so yeah and for achieving uh, this kind of thing we are right now working working in this way I think there's a, there's, a, there's a business here uh, for anyone who's watching, right? As you see in Singapore right now, there are a few companies that offer this where they will hire a remote worker for you. So there's one that I know that hires remote workers in Indonesia. Um, they handle uh, their employment contracts, they handle uh, their office location, and then they will uh, connect them to a Singapore employer. And the Singapore employer pays this middleman and the middleman pays the freelancer or the person who's working for this company. So I think there's an opportunity there for someone to set up the same for Bangladesh talent. You mentioned the, I mean, the target audience is 16 to 30 year olds. I think if they have been through interactive care through a course and they've gotten placed, like one thing I was sharing with you when we met, I think there's a possibility that you, because as they progress in their career, they go beyond 30 years old. Maybe they want to do an MBA, maybe maybe they want to do uh, some certification courses that will help them advance in their career. So like I was sharing with you, when you go to Coursera or when you go to Upgrad, you have these programs that are very advanced, like a doctorate in a certain topic. These courses are going for 50,000. I can get a Master of Science yeah. for 100,000 euros. What's interesting or what's eye-opening is that people are willing to pay that kind of money to take course online. And that's because the certification comes from a renowned university. So I was suggesting that maybe Interactive Cash, you could partner with like the top universities in Bangladesh. So maybe I couldn't get in there because of my poor grades. I'm a professional who has worked for a few years. I can go there and take a short course that is issued by this uh, top university in Bangladesh. So maybe this could be a place where you could charge more. And this is an opportunity for all of your 90,000 students who have gone through the program, the 6,000 have gone in place. This could be an interesting upsell for them as you go down the line. Yeah, I completely agree with you. In fact, one of our vision is uh, like that. Uh, we'll be having partnered universities and students. We'll be having uh, specific certification programs where students, they will finish the programs from our website and app. And after that, they will get certification from the leading universities of Bangladesh. In fact, uh, for this year, we have a vision of that. Uh, we have already started working with two of the leading private universities in Bangladesh. Like one interesting fact is that like uh, as you are 
in the digital marketing industry uh, i can say that in bangladesh in the formal education curriculum of the universities we we don't have courses of digital marketing but the marketers who graduate from the universities they need to do digital marketing when they get into a job so we'll be launching this kind of specialization courses and after finishing this kind of short specialization courses they will be getting certificates from leading universities like iba buet ruet this kind of universities uh, in bangladesh and also after finishing the program they will be getting placed in a like digital marketing agency partner in bangladesh like we we already have some of the leading digital marketing agency partner like where magnito digital in interactive cash as hiring partner so that is the ultimate vision of our company that's really great to hear that you already have these uh, plans in line because then i see um, like what osman was asking in the beginning like what is the lifetime value of these uh, students i think when you have these partnerships in place your lifetime value can very easily 1.5x or even double yeah 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 definitely definitely because certification matters a lot like for bangladeshi students because when they see like uh, leading universities they are providing online certification from our platform we can easily charge uh, 5 to 10x you now we are charging and if you need anybody to uh, g- give a course on digital marketing i know a guy uh, it- It's a uh, Rafi Shah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking like that when I uh, met Rajiv, and uh, I uh, like uh, knew uh, his background. You know, you know who's already has a course on interactive cares, right? None other than uh, Mr. Mustafa. Yeah. Mustafa Rash, the course upon interactive cares. What this guy? Yeah, he has a course on interactive cares. No way, really. Yeah, and he's telling me. Oh, yes, that's right. You did mention it. Yes, that's he's right. He's telling me he. He's making most. He's making. He, he he makes like he likes waking up in the morning and he says he still makes sales on a regular basis. So it's like a pleasant surprise to get uh, to get those sales coming in. So he's very happy with his uh, interactive cares experience. One other thing I wanted to ask Samir is, I feel that when someone gets placed, it's necessary to like get a testimonial from them, or even better, if you could get a video from them, you know, like to ask like where were they before they came to interactive cares, then they got placed in a job. and how has their life changed because of this experience and i think there are a lot of powerful stories that are that could possibly be told so i'm wondering do you already have because you mentioned you place 6000 people right have you started collecting these stories have you started videoing some of these because i think these can be very powerful in terms of uh, attracting more students to the platform we are already doing that we already have some of the videos who got placed from interactive cares and when we uh, like get news of hiring from any of the students we are in our partner companies we immediately call them and come to our office to come to our studio and we shoot a video and we also to those people who are basically getting hired from our company so we are actually already doing that very nice very nice very impressive I have no further questions. Let's move on to your questions. Yeah, no, no further questions. I think we've gone over the hour as well. So, um, really, thank you for your time, Samir. Okay, thank you, Samir, for giving us uh, time and for sharing about what Interactive Cares does. Uh, we're very impressed with what you're building with this one-stop virtual edtech platform. And what we both found really impressive was the fact that you're not just educating the students, but you're also putting in the effort to get them placed in jobs and creating employment in Bangladesh. So you've seen the episode you you know what Samir does if you like to get involved if you like to invest you can connect with Samir directly on LinkedIn and if you enjoyed this episode please remember to like comment and subscribe thank you and we'll see you on the next episode thank you bye bye